Hello again. In this presentation, I will present the pharmacology of the main sedatives used in the intensive care unit, including benzodiazepine, propofol, dexmedetomidine, and ketamine. We'll start with benzodiazepines. As you probably know, gamma-aminobutyric acid, or GABA, is the most common neurotransmitter in the central nervous system, found in high concentrations in the cortex and limbic system, and has an inhibitory effect on GABA receptors. The GABA-A chloride ion channel is a protein complex pentameric form that has varying combinations of alpha, beta, and gamma subunits. GABA binds to a site near the junction of alpha and beta subunits, and this causes conformational changes that open the chloride ion channel and lead to neuronal membrane hyperpolarization. Benzodiazepines are a GABA-A receptor agonist that bind to an allosteric site formed by the cleft between alpha and gamma subunits, and this facilitates GABA binding and increases the frequency of chloride channel opening. Benzodiazepines agents vary in their lipophilicity, active metabolites, onset, and elimination half-life. Midazolam is more lipid-soluble than lorazepam, resulting in a quick onset of sedation and a larger volume of distribution. Its lipophilicity allows for rapid penetration through blood-brain barriers. These characteristics make midazolam a good choice for continuous infusion administration. The sedative effect of midazolam is associated with anxiolysis and amnesia. Midazolam metabolizes in the liver via the cytochrome P450 system, which leads to potential drug-drug interactions with medications that either inhibit or induce cytochrome P450. It is associated with active metabolites that have prolonged sedative effects and can accumulate in renal failure. Lorazepam has a longer time to onset and duration of action, as it is not as lipophilic as midazolam, which makes it a good choice in the initial treatment of status epilepticus. Lorazepam exhibit direct glucuronidation, thus it can be used safely in patients with renal and hepatic dysfunction with minor side effects. Lorazepam is used as intermittent doses, and a continuous infusion should not be used, as higher doses are associated with propylene glycol-related toxicity. The half-life of these agents makes it difficult to achieve light sedation and perform daily sedation vacation trials paired with spontaneous breathing trials. Benzodiazepines should be reserved for patients who require a deep level of sedation, such as in cases of status epilepticus, alcohol withdrawal, the use of neuromuscular blockade, and in patients with benzodiazepine dependence or withdrawal, or patients are intolerant to other agents. Of note, these agents are associated with a higher rate of delirium in critically ill patients. In a study published in 2006, the probability of transitioning to delirium increased with the dose of lorazepam administered in the previous 24 hours. This incremental risk was large at low doses and reached 100% at around 20 mg per day. Propofol is an anesthetic agent that prepared in lipid emulsion. Its formulation contains soybean oil glycerol, egg lecithin, and a small amount of the preservative EDTA. Propofol binds to GABA-A, glycin, nicotinic, and M1 muscarinic receptors. Like most general anesthetic agents, the mechanism of action for propofol is poorly understood but thought to be related to the effects on GABA-mediated chloride channels in the brain. Propofol may work by decreasing the dissociation of GABA from GABA receptors in the brain and potentiating the inhibitory effects of the neurotransmitter. This, in turn, keeps the channel activated for a longer duration, resulting in an increase in chloride conductance across the neuron, causing a hyperpolarization of the cell membrane, making it harder for a successful action potential to fire. Propofol has a quick onset within 1 to 2 minutes, and its half-life is biphasic and dependent on the duration of infusion. The initial half-life is 40 minutes, and the terminal half-life is 4 to 7 hours. After a 10-day infusion, the terminal half-life may be up to 1 to 3 days. It can also accumulate in adipose tissue. It is used in doses of 0.3 to 3 mg per kg per hour, and it metabolizes through hepatic oxidation. Propofol is a versatile sedative that can achieve both light and deep levels of sedation, and can also be used as an anticonvulsant. Propofol is formulated in a lipid emulsion, and propofol 1% is associated with 1.1 kilocalories per milliliter. Triglycerides should be routinely monitored in patients to avoid risk of hypertriglyceridemia-induced pancreatitis. 
A typical cutoff of 500 to 750 mg per deciliter is used to transition away from propofol therapy. Main side effects that need to be considered during propofol therapy are bradycardia and hypotension, in addition to a rare but fatal syndrome known as propofol-related infusion syndrome or PRIS. Of note, propofol causes a green discoloration of urine. Propofol-related infusion syndrome is a rare but yet known side effect of propofol that occurs when high doses used for long duration. It occurs due to alterations in mitochondrial metabolism and electron transport chain function, but the exact mechanism of PRIS is still unknown. It is characterized with hypertriglyceridemia, metabolic acidosis, acute renal failure, cardiac arrhythmias, and rhabdomyolysis. PRIS is a diagnosis of exclusion. Management of propofol-related infusion syndrome is the discontinuation of propofol infusion and supportive treatment. Dexmedetomidine is a selective central alpha-2 agonist that exhibits sedative, anxiolytic, and analgesic effects. Presynaptic agonism of the receptors results in a negative feedback loop, which leads to a reduction of catecholamine outflow. Dexmedetomidine does not suppress respiratory drive, so it can be used in non-intubated patients. Of note, it does not provide deep sedation, so it should be avoided when RAS score of minus 3 or less is needed. The peak effect of dexmedetomidine is 60 minutes, if given over a continuous infusion. If an intravenous loading dose is used, the onset is 5 to 10 minutes, however incidence of hypotension and bradycardia is increased, so it should be reserved for agitated and hemodynamically stable patients who need rapid effect. Dexmedetomidine's half-life is approximately 3 hours. Clearance and plasma protein binding are decreased in patients with hepatic impairment. It has been FDA-approved for use in mechanically ventilated and non-intubated patients in ICU, with doses 0.2 to 0.7 micrograms per kg per hour, however, doses up to 1.5 micrograms per kg per hour have been used in the trials. Hypotension and bradycardia are the most common side effects with dexmedetomidine use. Tolerance may develop with prolonged use, in addition to withdrawal, if the infusion is used for greater than 72 hours. Ketamine is a non-competitive NMDA receptor antagonist that blocks glutamine. It produces a cataleptic-like state resulting in dissociation from the surrounding environment, by direct action to the cortex and limbic system. It can be used as an anxiolytic, amnestic, sedative, analgesic, and anticonvulsant. It has a rapid onset of 30 seconds. Its offset in the beta phase is about 2.5 hours. Ketamine's active metabolite, norketamine, is primarily formed by CYP3A4 and is renally excreted so it may accumulate in renal failure. For adverse effects, patients can have an increased heart rate and blood pressure, however, this side effect does not occur in catecholamine-depleted patients. Resolution of elevated blood pressure occurs within 15 minutes after peak effect. Prolonged emergence from anesthesia, which can manifest as vivid dreams, hallucinations, and or frank delirium commonly occur. Emergence reactions can occur up to 24 hours after administration. Risk factors include higher doses, females, excessive stimulation during recovery, history of personality disorder, and ketamine monotherapy. Of note, benzodiazepines can be used concurrently to minimize emergence reactions. Ketamine can increase cerebral blood flow. This has been related to increased intracranial pressure with higher doses and continuous infusions. In addition, this monitoring is unreliable with ketamine. If utilizing ketamine in a paralyzed patient, Ensure an adequate RAS and BIS prior to initiation of ketamine as BIS can increase with its administration. In summary, the main sedatives used in ICU for sedation are dexmedetomidine, propofol, and benzodiazepines. Each of these sedatives has its own pharmacological characteristics that make it a good option for certain patients in ICU. Dexmedetomidine could be used for mechanically ventilated and non-intubated patients, and it is a good option for light sedation and analgesic effect. Propofol can be used for light sedation but it could also provide a deep level of sedation that might be needed for patients with increased intracranial pressure or post-cardiac arrest. We prefer to avoid the use of benzodiazepines in general, but they may be a good sedation option in patients with status epilepticus, alcohol withdrawal, benzodiazepine dependence or withdrawal, 
and with the use of neuromuscular blockade. Thank you.